Welcome to the Living the Dream Podcast with Curveball. If you believe, you can achieve. Welcome to Living the Dream with Curveball, a podcast where I interview guests that teach, motivate, and inspire you to stop at nothing to fulfill your dream. Today, I am joined by a special guest. She is the one and only Samantha Lane. At 29 years of age, after years of being a workaholic, she had her chest cut open, so she decided to change her habits. She created some time management tools, and she also is now helping individuals and businesses to spend their time being productive in life and productive at work. Samantha, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. Why don't you start off by giving everybody a little bit of background about yourself? Sure. Um, As you mentioned, I used to be a workaholic and, uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of people can relate to being ambitious and wanting to reach goals. So I kind of lived this life of work first and life second. And then I had to have my chest cut open to fix a chest wall deformity that had my sternum sitting on my heart and ended up having a lot of complications with the surgery. And that experience helped me realize that life can be short And our time is the most valuable and precious asset that we have. So I changed my life to value it more. And then after a few years of living better, people decided that they wanted that too. So I started helping other people to do the same. And now that is what I do for a living full time. So what made you have the attitude work first, life second in the first place? You know, that's a good question. I think... For me personally, I think it was a combination of just sort of my own personal perspective on life and then just sort of, I think, what society encourages us to do. I think for a lot of us, we're kind of taught that we are defined by what we do. You know, think about it. When we're kids, people ask us, what do you want to be when you grow up? And they're not looking for us to say happy or fulfilled. They're looking for us to say a teacher, a doctor. So I think there's a little bit of that. And, you know, you go to a party and someone says, well, hi, what's your name? What do you do? We're just very defined by our jobs. And I think, unfortunately, our society really pushes us in that direction. So I think for me, it was a combination of maybe my own personal validation by what I do. And then I think too, just sort of what our country leads us to do. So how long did it take after or doing your experience before you realized that you needed to make the transition? And what are some of the things you did to make that transition to what you're doing now? Yeah. So I, I knew during my recovery that I needed to change my life, but I didn't really know how I needed to change that for probably a good I'd say six months after my surgery. And I started out by just creating the products that helped me. And that was really all I was planning to do was solve my own problem. And then after about a year or so of living better, I realized that other people deserved that too. And it just sort of felt selfish not to share it. And so that's sort of what sent me down the path of turning my my passion into a business. And I started out doing that just part-time. And then um, in 2019, I went into it full-time. Well, tell us about the products that helped you while you were recovering. So the first is a folding piece of paper. One of the reasons why the business that I run is called Origami Day. And it's something that just helps you map out your entire week and then fold it down where you're only looking at one day at a time. So it helps us to be a little more proactive in our week, but still just focus on one day. So we're not too overwhelmed with all the things that we might need to do. And then the other tool is a 14 month undated calendar and a notebook in one, because surprisingly, when I was on a hunt for the magic bullet to give me work-life balance, I, I couldn't find it. And I found that there are very few calendars that are, that are made this way, but it's really effective to sort of keep things in the same place. And, and when we plan on a month view calendar, we're less likely to overbook ourselves versus when we have 
other calendars that give us a lot of space for each day, it's not always consistent with the actual time that we have to do something. So those are the two tools that really make up the business from a product side. And then what I've also learned is people need a little bit of education and training and support. So I do a little bit of that with people as well. So if I'm a individual or a business and I come to you and I say, Hey, Samantha, I need help. I need better time management for my employees or myself. Kind of walk me through the steps of what I would get working with you, either business or personal. Yeah. So those are both, and that's a great question. Those are both the demographics that I do work with as individuals, as well as companies. We all spend so much time at work that when we have employers who are willing to help their employees find work-life balance and manage their time better, I think that's really a great way for us to spark the cultural shift that I think will sort of prevent more people from being workaholic. So for, for both individuals and companies, I, I always give a free download of the weekly planning sheet so that anyone can give it a try. Because I think if we just start planning once a week and looking at our time in a strategic way, then, then that's one of the, the quickest steps to having more balance in your days. And so I usually will encourage everyone to get that free download and start planning. And then I help with corporate training. So whether it's a team, you and your team want to all kind of address some of your pain points together, or if you individually want to talk through some of your your particular struggles, I help people to create things like a weekly template. Like Curtis, I'm sure there are things that you do every single week. So identifying those things and grouping them together would help you do those in a more effective manner. So just sort of um, helping people to troubleshoot, whether it's in a group format or individual format, what are your pain points and how do we come up with solutions that are within your comfort zone? Because that's the other thing. A lot of what I work with is change and people have varying comfort levels with change. Do you have any kind of books or, or courses that you put people through besides your free download or any podcasts or anything like that? So I do like to give a lot of free resources. <laughs> so in addition to the weekly planning sheet, I actually have a YouTube page that includes a lot of the podcast interviews that I've done throughout the years. That's There's sort of some sizzle reels so people can get just some quick tips and then go listen to the full episodes. I also have a blog that shares a lot of tips for people. And then I do have events. Some are free and some are paid. And those are always, all of that is always listed on my website. So there's, there's definitely a, a wide range of services for people who just, they might not know where they want to start, but they know they need a change. It's always good to just sort of start at the website and and see what different resources spark their personal needs. And go ahead and give, give out that website. Yes, that would make sense. Wouldn't it? Um, That is origamiday.com and that's O R I G A M I D A Y.com. And what made you call it that origami day? Well, so origami is the Japanese word for folding paper and where the first product that I created was a folding piece of paper. Um, that, that was a big part of it. And I also grew up in a Japanese American home and a big part of the Japanese culture is paying respect to your ancestors and being thankful for their hand in your life. And so to me, it seemed like a, a really nice way to pay respect to my heritage and my family by incorporating a Japanese word into my business name. Oh, okay. That's neat. I never knew that word meant yeah. folding paper. Technically means beautiful fold, but yes, it's, it's the art of folding paper. <laughs> Do you have any upcoming things that you're working on that people need to know about? And also, are you on social media? Give out your social media links. Yes. Uh, yes to both of those things. I am on social media. The best way, all the social media channels, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, it's all my origami day. And as far as upcoming things that I'm working on, I am really excited to work with an, another business owner in my region. And we are putting on actually a retreat for female business owners and, and professionals to really help women move forward in their lives with confidence and balance, especially after this pandemic world we've been in. I think a lot of people, especially women, are struggling with self-confidence and balance. And so Uh, We are creating an event that helps these women to sort of unplug from their, their lives for a minute and reset and move forward in a way that is, is good for their well-being and their productivity. Are your services just local or 
could anybody from anywhere log on and, and get what you have to offer? Anyone from anywhere. I actually have clients, um, I think, in three of the four corners of the United States at this point. So I do work with people all over the country. And anyone anywhere listening to this podcast could find something uh, in the origami day sphere that would help them. But there are also physical events in the Southeast where I'm located. Do you have any final thoughts for people out there looking to manage their time or become better time managers? Any tips based on your experience and all that you've been through that you could give somebody to help them? Because the next person that goes through what you went through, you know, they might not be so lucky as you were. Absolutely. You know, um, I was thrown a curveball, and I know that's something that you talk about on your podcast. And the beautiful thing about that curveball was it forced me to have a realization that I wish everyone could have without that same experience. And that realization is that how we spend each day is how we spend our lives. And that time is a precious resource that we can actually manage a lot more and control a lot more than maybe we're led to believe. So, Outside of that encouragement that each and every one of us can manage our days in a way that lets us be present in our lives while still being productive, I would encourage people to think about three tips to to do that. One would be identify what's most important in your life and in your career. And once you have those prioritizations, um, those priorities, then take time each week to make a written plan for the week so you can be proactive versus reactive in your days. And then have the confidence to protect that plan. A lot of times people might do the first step and the second step, but they don't protect that plan and they get distracted by their phones or by other people, or they don't do something that's written down. And really having that confidence that no one else's time is more important than yours and you're allowed to say no and you're allowed to protect your plan. I think that combination, those three sort of tips together have have really become the foundation of how I encourage and teach people to live their lives in a, in a more balanced way. Ladies and gentlemen, Samantha Lane, argamiday.com. Thank you so much for joining me today, Samantha. Thank you. And listeners, please be sure to subscribe, rate, review, share. And if you're an Android listener, go to the Google Play Store Type in Living the Dream with Curveball and download the app. For more information on the Living the Dream podcast, visit www.djcurveball.com. Until next time, stay focused on living the dream.